Alright, here we are, end of the day, about 5 o'clock, as you can see, fish on, Rod's got one on here. It's got one on the fly, and you know what, we both just said it, it's cold, we haven't caught anything for a while, let's go home. <laughs> and all of a sudden Rod hooks into a fish, it's not a bad one, it's not huge, but you know what, it's not bad at all. And it's getting on. Yeah, it's not dark yet, but it's cooling off. Let's see what we got here, Rod. Yeah, that's not bad. A little nice little fish. Yeah. What do you got there, Rod? Proven producer. Works every time. All right. All right. Till the next fish. Catch you in a bit. Hello there. Welcome back. It's been a while since we've tied any flies, <clears throat> and uh, so today we're gonna tying of the pike fly. This is a fly I used last year for the first time and um, had great success with it. In fact, it caught the majority of my fish, pike anyways. <clears throat> Probably 70% of the pike I caught last year were on this fly. And uh, it's not my pattern. It comes from across the pond. There's a gentleman over in Scotland that has a blog and a website. He ties a lot of flies commercially. He's a great tire. His name's Dave, that's his address there, web address. If you tie bait fish patterns or flies for predatory fish, be they saltwater or freshwater, uh, you owe it to yourself to check out that website. It's a great site. <clears throat> this was a pattern that he came up with. He was just fooling around, threw some materials together one day and came up with this. And uh, there was no recipe for it or instructions for tying it. He just had a few pictures of it there on his site one day and I thought as soon as I saw it I knew it I knew that this fly um, was gonna was gonna slay the pike over here so here we go we're tying this on a 2 aught Gamagatsu I think it's a B109S they're called they're like a stinger style hook and we're just going to tie our thread in here work it down the shaft till it's about even with the point of the hook start of the point just like that and the first thing we're going to tie in is some marabou I like to get marabou in my flies <clears throat> these style of flies anyways because when you're pike fishing sometimes you got to slow the retrieve right down to very very slow and when you do that the nice thing about marabou is that marabou will continue to to move in the water it will continue to undulate in the water and that's that's a key thing, movement on the fly is key, even at slow speeds when you're barely stripping, barely manipulating the fly. So, uh, we're going to use some barred marabou, olive barred marabou. I like this stuff, it has a very natural, realistic look to it. We're going to tie that in, just like that, top of the hook shank, tie it in nice and tight. Cut off the excess. And just wind that right in. Make sure that's tied in really well. And then what we want to do at this point is get a little bit of glue on this hook shank. Keep make sure everything stays nicely bound down. We're going to tie a lot of materials on here, and so we don't want to uh, have this stuff rotate off. Come down the shank to where about the two thirds portion or one third back, whatever you want to call it. And uh, next material is bucktail, some nice white bucktail. You want to try and find the longest pieces you can on it. I mean, again, depending on the, the fly you're tying, but this is a a big fly it's a two watt fly so we want to try and find some of the longer fibers on the on the tail and grab a decent clump most people usually use the 
size of an HB pencil as a good gaze for how much material they want. This fly is slightly bigger so it doesn't hurt to go a little bigger than that. We're going to flip this upside down. This is going to be the belly of the fly. We're just going to tie that on like so. You want to hold this bucktail fairly tight in your hand. You want to get a couple of loose wraps around here and then you want to crank down on it. And you want to still hold on to it because we don't want this deer hair to distribute around the hook shank like it does when you're spinning deer hair for example. We're not spinning the hair here so we don't want that to happen. We want the hair to stay on the bottom of the hook just like that. All right <clears throat> now some more bucktail we're going to use olive a light olive color for this. You could use bright yellow like that or maybe a, a chartreuse chartreuse green or maybe a pale yellow that's I think all those color variations would work quite well but for me this is being tied to in large part represent a juvenile pike like a small pike minnow and so the light olive seems like the best color for that um, for that representation. Again you want to find a spot that has some fairly long fibers and clip out about the same size chunk you did for the the white. Get rid of any of that fuzz. It's always in deer hair now tie this right on top. Let's clip those ends a little bit, square them off. Easier to tie if you have square ends. There we go. And again, hold on to it as you do a couple of loose wraps. And then you can crank down on those on those wraps and really secure in that hair, that bucktail. And there we go. And you'll notice how there's a nice, there's a delineation, a nice delineation between top and bottom. This hasn't rolled into one another and blended in together, which, you know, sometimes you do want to do, but on this particular fly we want, we don't want that. We want a nice, a nice delineation between the top and the bottom. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is tie in some flash. Got to get flash in these flies, especially for pike. And this type of flash that I'm going to use is a, I don't know exactly what it's called, but it looks like a, looks like fish scales. I really like this stuff for tying these style of flies. It, um, it's, an, it's a green color. You can get this in different colors. This particular color is green. But this stuff just looks like the scales of a fish. And as such, just makes it look so much more realistic when the bait's moving through the water, when your fly's moving through the water, you're stripping it. We're going to tie that down right on top, just like that. And then just take each bundle here and put that down the side and tie it in just like that. right down the sides of the hook and you can grab those bunches lift them up and cut them off so that they're just about the same length or maybe slightly longer than the and the bucktail is now we want to put um, something that gives the fish some markings most fish are not one solid color they have a variation of markings on them and to do that we're going to use saddle hackle that's got barred markings on it. We're going to use a couple olive and a couple yellow. And so we'll grab some of the longer feathers here. Grab a couple of yellow ones. And then we'll take some of these olive ones and we'll grab two of those. And now we'll match one olive one up with its yellow counterpart. And you'll notice these have a curve to them, a natural curve like that. What I want to do is I want to put those curves opposite each other, just like that. 
and marry these two feathers together matched up by their tips just like that just like that so now you got a nice barred feather just like that and you want to judge the length you need roughly like that and then take the feather and strip off that under fur at your tie in point so you can get your tie in nice and just stick that right on the side and tie that in Put nice tight wraps like that Check it out, make sure it looks good. Cut off the excess. There you go. And just finish getting that nice and secured in there. And then we do the same thing on the other side. Take your feathers, match up the tips. length you want just like that strip off of this under fur that's near your tie-in point adjustments you need to make get it in the right spot where you want it and then cut off the excess secure that down nice doesn't hurt at this point in time to put a little more glue on the head just helps toughen the fly up that much more okay now we need a something to darken up the back and for that we're gonna use peacock curl and I just take a bunch of this stuff like that Out any stragglers now you want to get that roughly the same length of those hackle feathers you tied in and here we go tie those in and yeah for a surprise visit from the dog here we go we got rid of the kid you won't see her again she's swimming with the fishes now I'm just joking um, we got our peacock curl tied in, and uh, now we just need to secure it all in so that it won't come apart on us. There we go. All right, starting to look like a fly now. Last thing we want to do, more flash. I like to add some more flash in. You don't have to, but I'm a big fan of of having lots of flash in my flies for pike. If you've ever seen a lure move through the water, lure fishing, when you're lure fishing for pike, there's more flash on those things than you're ever going to have ever on any fly that you make. Um, so it's I'm never shy about putting flash in my in my flies when it comes to pike flies that's for sure so we'll put some more of that fish scale flash in like that and cut it to length it's looking pretty good so now what we 
we got to do is just finish off our head here build up the taper just a little more Daddy. and that's the daughter yelling Daddy. now we can whip finish the fly and then we just need the last few steps which is putting the eyes and the head on the fly so get a nice good whip finish on it that one slipped a little bit on me tie that one off and now we can move to the eyes doing the eyes of the fly okay so once you get your eyes on the fly and determine that they're straight all you gotta do now use your epoxy or your epoxy substitute this is tough fly there's other epoxy substitutes out there now all you gotta do is just fill up the gap between the eyes and you're done